Okay, last lesson for chapter 11.2. This is lesson number six. Uh, just finishing off the examples here that we have at uh, in dealing with our starting points according to the Lawrence method. And uh, looking at, are you solving for HM? Are you solving for delta H or Q? Or are you solving for a chemical amount? So here we have another question, very similar to example number three, the one we just completed. And we have a 100 mL sample of 0.15 molar nitric acid being neutralized by the addition of 8.5 grams of solid lithium hydroxide, and this takes place in a calorimeter. The solution temperature decreases by 9.2 degrees C. Calculate the molar enthalpy of neutralization for lithium hydroxide. So again, we're into that same kind of starting point. This is the yellow box that we see on the previous page where we have to start with energy over amount because we're looking for that molar enthalpy. Because the calorimeter is described, I'm using my idea here that the enthalpy energy that I have for my reaction, in this case the neutralization reaction, is equal and opposite to the heating up or cooling down of the liquid in the calorimeter. So I'm going to start with uh, that one again. So I'm looking at my negative Q idea here. And so I'm dealing with a solution. All right, all solutions are treated as water. So I have my 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram degree C. That's my specific heat capacity of the water in, um, or the solution, or the solvent, if you like, inside that calorimeter. Uh, from there, I know I have 100.0 mils. Remember, your solutions are treated as water. So I have 0 0.1000 kilograms of water in my calorimeter and I can see that the temperature increases by 9.2 degrees. So there's my 9.2 degrees C. And so there we go, there is my energy as calculated by the calorimeter. Q is equal to delta H. So C goes, kilograms go, and so I just have that value. Calculate it separately if you like, like we did in question number two, or continue on here. So now I have energy, but I still need energy over the amount of LiOH. For that then, I have to find that from the question. And I had an 8.5 gram addition of LiOH, and so I'll put this over 8.5 grams. Now I have kilojoules per gram, but I wanted kilojoules per mole, so I have to convert grams to moles. For that, I need to uh, convert and uh, take that molar mass for lithium hydroxide. For that, you need your periodic table and figure out what all of the various atoms are in LiOH. You can see it there, that's your chemical formula. So we need all of the various uh, atomic masses. For that, it's 6.94 for lithium, it's 16 for the oxygen, and it's 1.01 for the hydrogen, giving uh, me a molar mass here of 23.95 grams per mole. So you can see that we had slightly less than a one mole quantity. So grams now go, your units are kilojoules over moles. We just run this through our calculator of 4.19 times your 0.1 mass times 9.2. So I end up with 3.85 kilojoules. Divide that by your 8.5 gram amount, and then multiply here by 23.95, and we get a value of negative 10.861 kilojoules per mole. So I should fix my calculator here for the correct number of sig digs. Three, there's four with my uh, volume slash mass, two with my temperature, two with my mass of LiOH, and four in molar mass, so two is my limit. There's my two. The first number drop determines my rounding up, and so this is negative 11 kilojoules per mole. Make sense? I certainly hope so. Another example to burn through here. It says, predict the enthalpy change for 15 grams of pentane, uh, or when 15 grams of pentane is burned. The molar enthalpy of combustion for pentane is negative 3,500 kilojoules per mole. 
Okay, so what are we looking for in this question? Doesn't ask for molar enthalpy, doesn't ask, ask us for the amount of pentane, but it is asking us for how much energy is going to be released in the form of enthalpy change. So we're just looking here for a delta H. All right, so when you're looking for just the random amount of energy released, when it gives us molar enthalpies, that's a great place to start because lo and behold, there's an energy term right there. Okay, so for this one then, we are looking for the delta H of this question. So we begin with the delta HM, which is giving us the units of kilojoules over moles. So I'll start with that, negative 3,500 kilojoules of energy for every one mole of pentane that is burned. Well, I don't have a molar amount of pentane to compare to, so why don't we change this one to grams? Okay, for pentane, C5H12, we have to figure out its molar mass. All right, so 12.01 for every carbon, and then 1.01 for every hydrogen. Gives us a total molar mass, put moles on top to cancel that, 72.17 grams per mole. Moles are now gone. You have kilojoules per gram. That's great. I can compare now to the grams of pentane that I actually had. So I'll put them up top to cancel out those grams. And as you take a look at it, I get 3,500 kilojoules of energy released for every 72.17 grams of pentane that's burned. I'm burning about a fifth of that. So I should have about a fifth of this value here when I work it out. Punch this through your calculator. And there's our fifth amount. It gives us negative 727.449 dot 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 kilojoules. That's the only unit I had remaining. All right, so there's my enthalpy change. I just have to put that into the correct uh, number of significant digits, four, four, and three. And so therefore, my answer here will be negative 727 kilojoules, or that is my delta H. Okay, so there's a few examples. Uh, we keep plugging away with uh, a few more here, but what you might want to do is now start pausing the video. Try a couple more of these. All right, there, so there's six, seven, and eight. What you might want to do is try these ones on your own and then start the video up again, see how your solution compares to mine, but I think after these last three, you're starting to see the strategy that's going on. All right, we use that uh, little starting point, either the yellow box, green box, or blue box to figure it out, and then start your factor label process with whatever uh, suggested starting point you have, be it energy over amount or using your molar enthalpy. Okay, so pause, try number six and seven, and uh, let's uh, see how you do with that one. Okay, so. You've now done six and seven, that's fantastic. Here's hoping that uh, it matches what I've got for you. And so in this one, we have the molar enthalpy combustion for ethanol now, C2H5OH. From there, we know that it uh, gives off 1,371 kilojoules for every mole that is burned. It says calculate the energy released when 10 grams of ethanol undergoes combustion. So in this case, we're looking for energy released. That would be a delta H in this case, and it is a combustion energy released. So when we look at those uh, boxes then, this is again in the green box. So we just begin with the delta CHM for our substance, in this case, the methanol. I get 1,371 kilojoules of energy given off for every one mole of methanol. I'm trying to figure this out for 10 grams of, uh, pardon me, ethanol. And to do that, I need to be able to compare the two. And so what is our molar mass here for uh, ethanol? All right, we get 12.01 for every carbon, six hydrogens times 1.01, and 16 more for our oxygen. That's gonna work out to 46.08 grams for every 
mole of ethanol. Moles cancel out of our problem. You now have kilojoules per gram. Let's get rid of those grams, and we have a 10 gram quantity. Okay, so grams now cancel. Just for fun, I'm looking at the amount I had versus the molar amount, and you can see it's somewhere between a quarter and a fifth of the actual amount, so I should have a reduction in the amount of overall energy released. And so plunk that through your calculator, and it gives us negative 297.5 kilojoules of energy released when 10 grams of ethanol is burned. Four, four, and three for our sig digs. So there's our three, the five rounds up. And so we get a final answer of negative 298 kilojoules or an uh, exothermic amount, which makes sense when we burn stuff that it gives off heat. Okay, here's number uh, seven. We'll do that one really quickly. The molar enthalpy of reaction for substance X again, got lots of these generic ones in these examples, is negative 100 kilojoules per mole. The molar mass of X is 50 grams per mole. What mass of X is consumed if 748 kilojoules is released? So, where are we again? All right, not molar enthalpy, not an enthalpy change or heat. In this one, we're looking for the amount of X. So, we'll take that delta HM that the question provided, and we're just going to flip it to put chemical amount or moles in the numerator, and then we'll just convert to whatever uh, unit I need here, which would likely be grams for mass. So, start with, again, sorry, I'll put this down here. We're looking for an amount of X. So, we just begin with delta HM, but this time we'll take the reciprocal of it. So, for there then, I have negative 100 kilojoules per mole. So there's my negative 100 kilojoules. But I'm going to flip it and put moles in the numerator. Now I just need to get to grams. So, to turn moles into grams, remember that's using molar mass. And so 50.0 grams over moles. We'll cancel that out. Now you have grams per kilojoule. We're told that we had 748 kilojoules given off. All right, so there's your 748 kilojoules. It's released, so remember, those are negative values. Do that. Kilojoules now go, and the only unit standing here is grams. So run your factor label conversion here through your calculator. Numerators are multipliers. Your denominators are divisors, and so 50 times negative 748 divided by negative 100, doesn't matter the order, remember, gives you 374 grams on your calculator. And for the first time today, your um, calculator is giving you the correct sig dig answer. There was three as our limit, and the calculator spits out exactly three. Okay, so I hope those went well for you guys. Um, Question eight, very much uh, the same kind of idea here. I'll just give you that answer. This one is 25.1 grams. So hopefully you guys are able to match that one when you attempt it. And then I have another one here. This is kind of related to a lab uh, that we'll be doing, lab 11.2. So just take a look at what's going on here. It says, what is the molar enthalpy of neutralization for potassium hydroxide? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for delta HM. In this case, it's for KOH. All right, so what do we do? We begin with the energy that we can find or have given to us over the amount, in this case, of KOH. So you can see that we have a table of data here that we'll have to go investigate and see if we can figure out what's going on here. So energy. I don't see any sort of real information on energy, but I am noticing that I did have volume of solution, and I do have temperature changes. This is telling me that the energy can be found by the calorimeter data that is being described. So again, Q is equal to MC delta T, or start with your specific heat and keep going. And then we do have an amount of KOH given. You can see that 75 mils of KOH have uh, been given to us. 
So I can start with that. These are an acid and a base solution, hydrobromic acid and potassium hydroxide. We're not told anything really weird or different here. We see that the concentrations are low, so I can treat them like water. So I'll start off with my 4.19 uh, kilojoules per kilogram degree C. Remember that in your calorimeter, you do have that assumption that enthalpy changes are related to uh, the heating up or the cooling down. So there we go, put my negative in there. And then I just have to figure out how much stuff I actually have in here to get rid of the kilograms. I have 75 mils of one solution, so that's 75 grams. 75 mils of a second solution are in this calorimeter, so that's another 75 grams, or 150 grams total. Put into kilograms, that's 0 0.150 kilograms of solution that can heat up or cool down in the calorimeter, and that now goes. We also have to figure out uh, what our temperature change is going to be. And you can see that you had a cold solution and a warmer solution, but of equal volumes. So for that, what we would do is we would take an average. If I have 21 degree uh, cold solution and 23 degree hot solution of equal volumes, I think it makes sense to us that a 22 degree initial temperature would be my starting point. They come to equilibrium at 36.8, so we can see it heats up, and we can see it heats up by 14.8 degrees. And so degrees C go, there's my calorimetry information. I just put the square brackets there to highlight that these three fractions are for the energy that is released or absorbed by that calorimeter solution. I then have to put in the amount of KOH, and for that I had uh, 75 mils. Okay, so uh, 0 0.0750 liters, just easier to work in the standard unit. And I have its concentration of 0 0.20 moles per liter. You can see the units in the table there. So I can cancel out the liters by using its 0 0.20 uh, mole per liter concentration. Liters now go. I have kilojoules over moles. That is my molar enthalpy amount. I just have to punch this into the calculator really quickly, 4.19 times 0.15 times that 14.8 and now divide by 0 0.075 and divide again by 0.2 and that gives us uh, negative 620.12 kilojoules per mole and so deal with our limit here the least sig digs we had in this calculation was the concentration, or just two. So I'll have to take the value of 620 kilojoules per mole. I'll require scientific notation here. And so I get negative 6.2 times 10 to the 2 kilojoules per mole as my molar enthalpy uh, for potassium hydroxide. Okay, so that was a ton of examples. I hope it makes sense. What you should go do now is practice a bunch of this. This is a major idea. We've put together um, three of the four different ways that we can calculate sort of the energy changes going on. We've got the calorimeter, we've got molar enthalpy, and then we've got uh, just generic enthalpy changes or delta H. So lots of reading and deciphering. Again, easiest strategy for you will be to go through and read the question and first determine what is the question asking. Once you've got that, you can look for a starting point as either the yellow, blue, or green box, and then go from there. All right, uh, if we're in classes and uh, uh, you're looking at these, again, Lab 11A is a good one to do to get ready for a Lab 11.2. Um, if you're watching this because of at-home learning, it's doubtful that 11.2 is going to be accomplished. But take a look at this stuff, try it out. Answers for uh, page 492 and 494 are on D2L. Good luck with this, guys. Practice, 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 and we'll see you in the videos for Chapter 11.3.